Hello and welcome back to Heroic Stats episode 25. This is of course an Any Heroics podcast. Um, my name is Stephen, I am of course your rankings officer who you can all uh, now but be belligerent about in the comments about how I've uh, only partially updated the lists on the uh, DBH Show website. Um, <laughs> I'm joined as always by Mr. Gareth Southgate, who's just brought his side home from a very impressive nil-nil draw against the prominent football oh, yeah. nation of, is it Slovenia? I didn't watch. Uh, it was Slovenia, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. And we are joined, we are graced with the presence of Mr. William Champion, the champ himself. Uh, sorry, it's cringe to say that, apparently. Um, <laughs> Will, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I, I only get called William when I'm in trouble, so I don't know why I'm here. Oh, right. Well, we've called <laughs> you here today. Uh, well, your father and I. Um for those of you who aren't aware, um, I am, of course, also the captain of Any Heroics, uh, the only team in the GBHL where we elect our captain based on their average body temperature, because mine apparently is 42 degrees all the fucking time, because I feel like I'm going to die. Um, I hope you're all well out there. I think the horrendous British humidity is getting to us all, so apologies if we look casual and bedraggled. Maybe it's just me. Casual. This is my formal tank top, thank you. <laughs> this I is the wife beater I wear to weddings. Um, yeah, exactly. big, uh, big will from the in between us vibes. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not aware, we are here, of course, to talk about the uh, competitive events of the weekend gone, um, usually GBHL events, sometimes international events. Um, but first of all, a little bit of hobby chat. What have you been up to, Stephen? I've only got them bloody painted some models. Whoa, shit. After putting them off for, for yonks. Um, this, it's the famous Thrandor's Halls has finally got some paint on them. Yes, they have. No, I don't have I pictures. You might have mentioned them about six times yes. on the hobby section, like this weekend. No, it's definitely this weekend, you guys. I've, I've, I've gone and done it. You've only gone and moved to house. Yeah. Oh, well, that was a month ago. Right? That excuse is gone. Dave, what have you been up to? Um, I've finally painted enough rangers to play them at every point level I think I want to after yeah? a long time. You're yeah. going to take them to unnumbered tiers this year? No, but I don't think you can run Legendary Allegiance at that tournament. Oh, you cannot. You are correct. Wait, not, not, you couldn't last year. So, yeah. trick. I, I can't. I'm not allowed. I can't paint more rangers even if I wanted to. Will, we haven't seen you for about four weeks on this podcast. Have you done anything recently, hobby-wise? Uh, I've done some bits and bobs. Um, I've been playing a lot of Legion's Imperialis at the moment. Um, ah. So I've been picking up some tiny space marines. Um, and as people may know from this year, I've been uh, spreading the good word of Moria. Um, playing Jane Moria, no legendary legions required. Um and I decided that I got bored of converting the same uh, Gun the Bad Goblin Shaman. Um, so I've made some cool sculpts on Hero Forge to give them a bit more character. Um, so I've got those to look forward to painting over the next couple of days as well. Great website, Hero Forge. Cool. Uh, I've used it for a couple of D&D &D minis. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's super nice. fun. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Yeah. yeah, but I've used it before as well for a gift for a friend once. Um, but before we get into the winning list of the weekend, it's Will's favourite segment. <laughs> we are, of course, proudly affiliated oh, with Seventh City Collectibles. Um, your your favourite stockists of all your favourite systems, even Legion, Legion Imperialis, which is kind of like Epic, but not really because it's modern version. It's cool. I like it. I've seen the models. Um Seven City Collectibles, go check them out uh, in the Nottingham area. Go sell them your second-hand armies. Go buy Lorcana cards if you're like John. Um, go buy your Middle Earth stuff. Go hang out. Go get some food. Go say hi to Will. Um, yeah, very proud to be sponsored. Well, not sponsored, sorry, affiliated. There's a difference. Um, <laughs> I forgot to address the fact that the intern isn't here this weekend, uh, this weekend, this yep. week. Um he actually uh, did something very nice for me, which will come up in a moment. And I've actually given him the week off this week. So 
Yeah, that's true. We let him out of the dungeon for a little uh, bit of fresh air and a run around. Yeah, exactly. Managed for exercise. Managed for exercise. Exactly. Um, moving on to the one event of the weekend, which we have results for. It was Hunt for the One Ring. Uh, the TO was Mr. Gary Sharp. It was held at Black Dragon Miniatures uh, in... I want to say it's near Melton, because I know uh, Mr. Jack Darlington frequents there sometimes. Um, it was uh, 500 points. It was three games with three specified scenarios in a specified order. Uh, it was Heirlooms, Destroy the Supplies, and Clash by Moonlight. So uh, everyone going into the tournament knew exactly what they were playing, um, or at least the scenario-wise. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at those scenarios, what are we what are we thinking immediately off the bat, beyond the fact that you need banners? Spider Queen. Mm, Spider Queen. I mean, That's two banners and the Spider Queen is my first thought there. Yeah. I'd, I'd be licking my lips at um, Fell Beings of Mirkwood. The legendary legion with Raz Gush, that'd be really nice at 500, especially for those scenarios. No, and Hunter Orcs as well. Hunter Orcs would love those. It's funny you say that about Fell Beings of Mirkwood because our very own John, the intern partridge, went there. Um, he didn't tell us who the most sporting was, so I will be giving him a spanking when I see him uh, this weekend. Um, but he took Fell Beings of Mirkwood. Um, did he do well with them or not? We'll find mm. out. Um, um, I can tell you, however, he did win Best Painted. Um, he did, however, refuse the... to send me any pictures. Um, he said, it's basically the same recycled Angmar army that I've won Best Painted with before. Uh, and I said, that's very rude. Um, I'm going to have to consider banning you from the podcast. However, to show off some of John's wonderful painting work, John had a very nice surprise for me when he came down to mine this weekend on Saturday. He came to stay the night because he had something in Bristol. Um, he had me a little early 30th birthday present, which apparently quite a few other people knew about. Obviously, I didn't. He yeah. had made me yeah. a little diorama with a converted Gilgalad and a 3D printed Sauron uh, at the Battle very of Dagalad. Nice. So this is what we will be featuring for our best painted. Is specifically this, um, absolutely gorgeous work. He's got some uh, lighting source from a gloss there. He's got the, the beautiful three D sculpt for Sauron, which I might actually be yeah. using this year if Tio let me. For the old Elra here featuring a spear, which is a a classic for a, well either one of Eladan and Elra here on horse. Given yeah. a spear works really well for Gilgalad because like, both of those models are nicely sculpted, and the, he's opted for a stabbing action, which I, I, think, I mean, this is super cool. Very yeah. nice. He's also um, put a little green stuff uh, headband on him, I think, because I'm not, I can't remember. No, they have that thing. anyway. He oh, I don't do. think he's the head at all. Yeah. Oh, only, only nine out of ten, though, John. Um, I foresee, honestly, uh, John doing some commission. Uh, dioramas in his future because this was really cool and when he gave it to me I was I mean it's on my mantelpiece above my TV now so yeah you're going really to be used work. to go glad in tournaments or are you going to keep him safe keep him secret keep him safe <sighs> I'm probably going to use it to be honest I'm probably going to use it's it, it. Use yeah. yeah I mean you're I've, a glad truther so I haven't used them yet this year there is an upcoming 800 point tournament which may add special rules which uh potentially mitigate some of his weaknesses. Um, that is false, Mr. Denby, because he used them against me at doubles. What do you mean? He used Gilgalad against me at doubles this year. Oh, God, I did, didn't I? Do you not remember? He was pretty important because oh, I, I shattered all his stuff and then he ran away. Yeah, you shattered his uh, spear and then he was like, cool, I guess I'll Peace leave. Out. <laughs> yeah. And he ran away and hid behind the rest of the army like a little bitch for the rest of the game. Oh, all right. He, 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 did, he did what must be done. He did what must be done. <laughs> uh, moving swiftly on to the winning lists. In third place, Mr. Sam Barker with everyone's favourite cute couple. It's another <laughs> Mordor Serpent Ward Alliance. Um, we've got a pretty standard uh, low point build for the Witch King. Uh, it's 145 points with Crown of Morgul, Horse, 3 Might, 3 Will, 2 Fates, uh, 6 Black Nuns, 6 Moranorks with Shield and Spear, and 2 Orc Trackers. 
And then the other warband that was a Sulidan with armored horse, of course, uh, two serpent riders, eight Haradrim warriors with bow and spear, two Haradrim warriors with spear, and just three Haradrim warriors with no additional gear. Um, look yeah, at the scenarios. Like it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll do it. Heirlooms, think, um, is, heirlooms is always a crapshoot, but for the other two scenarios, oh, it helps pretty a lot. Solid. He's got two serpent riders as well, so he can grab, he can rush a couple of the uh, object, uh, not objectives. And also, heirlooms at small points is like even swingier than it normally is because most armies only have two or three war bands and they're not the strongest at that points level usually. So you end up with like if you roll well, roll badly, or like it's much more swung by like early sixes on the pickup tests. Uh, as, as is my sort of assessment of it. Yeah. In yeah. Uh, because yeah, there's also way, like, way less models as well at that points level. Um, the Witch King can like really easily unpick the list and you know mm. compound like the prize bearer pretty quickly. Got like yeah, 800 yeah, points and we've got 40, 40, 50 models to hide behind. It's much harder. Whereas you, yeah. you're looking to have 30, to be honest. And so the Witch King mm. just like, I'll take that, my lad. We, we've all yeah. had those games like... in heirlooms where the opponent picks it up turn one and then hides it behind 30 goblins and you're like... Cool, this is a draw at best. Hmm. Well, there's also, I mean, Sulidan brings a banner in the highly defensive ball, and this is like those two together are like a solid strike force. Like they'll both beat over almost any troops mm. that you'll see at 500. If, if you can't, if they're not beating over the troops, then they're probably using elves. And if they're using elves, they've got about 22 models, and so you could just afford to strike and kill two, and then that's completely worth it. You know what it's, I mean? This like, is also a list where both warbands function well independently if you do get split up with a maelstrom. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it's better together, as Witch King and Suladan always are. But yeah. you can either have the uh, Haradrim supporting the Mordor section, or you can just have each bit supporting itself. Well, he's not, he's not gone for... Uh, he seems to have deliberately chosen to not do that. He's gone for the Moran and Black Numenorean line. He's got like, yeah. a small part of that, and he's got a block of Harad separate to that. Um, and he's got maximum bows, which is nice. Well, he doesn't yeah. know. He hasn't maxed out his trackers, but that's okay. Knowing you've got, knowing you've got Clash coming up, it makes sense. You, yeah. Um, um, I think, honestly, I think... Uh, um, uh, Five hundred points. I don't. I'd maybe consider dropping dropping a will off the Witch King and having another tracker. Not that it doesn't make a big difference, but it gets the breakpoint up by one, gets you another bow, and I don't think you need that much will. Like, it's obviously good to have more will, but it's not essential. With with the crown, um, you're only really like one or two dice and stuff anyway, aren't you? Yeah, and at five hundred points, a lot of the time you might just be using him as a essentially another solo down, like another combat hero. The massive beat yeah. stick. Yeah. And you're only gonna need a couple of spells a turn, probably. If they have a bat swarm or a spider queen or something, then yeah, you can focus it down if you want to. But um you might not need to. It might be like a, a hunter orc situation where nothing is really worth targeting. Or it might be like a I'm gonna one dice transfix the master every turn, but that's only gonna be one dice. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good list. I'm not surprised this came came third. Yeah. Agreed. Um, moving on to second place, um, it's Mr. J- um, Jakob Crocmal, apologies, uh, with a list we have seen something quite similar to. Um, this is uh, obviously similar, at least in theme and chariot to make up to the list he won the uh, Seventh City GP with. Um, so it's a total of 14 models. It is Variax mm-hmm. of Kant. He's got a king with chariot with two Candish horsemen. A chieftain on chariots with two Kandish horsemen, another chieftain on chariot with two Kandish horsemen, and a warrior with bow. And finally, a Kandish chieftain on chariots with two horsemen and a warrior. Nice. Yeah. I, I mean, think it's pretty cool. It's big flavor, baby. Big flavor. It's probably a 500 point meta call out against the uh, Hunter Orc. Uh, Lake Town stuff Lake that you Town. see floating around a lot. Yeah, it just bodies them, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't have to take terror tests for that shenanigans with the previous guys as well. Like yeah. it might not just run them down, but chieftains are still five five, and they still have monstrous charge. So like, you know, and kings are obviously also five five. So even if they don't run down the Black Numenorians, they will go through the Harad like nothing as well. 
Um, it's interesting that they he chose this for heirlooms because this is notably not fantastic at heirlooms. Um, as long as you can, I guess, as long as you can get the heirloom, you can just encircle it with chariots and just run stuff over. But um, this isn't a list that is like particularly. I suppose it's fast. You just use the horsemen to run after the heirlooms. It, but, it does uh, have the nice theory of you come in after someone and then hopefully run them over if they don't know how to deploy that's correctly. true yeah if you go second um, it's very very good yeah yeah um but yeah no it's nice to see him using this list again um yeah i know he enjoys this a lot because i've seen him with utter glee at the seven city i think he was yeah. one table over just cackling as he just continuously mowed down a bunch of hunter orcs um yeah and it's always nice to see Jakob happy because yeah. <laughs> The realm is uh, happy. Having played this before myself, like it is incredibly fun. Um, and the, to be honest, the only thing that really stops it is like a magic heavy list. And at 500 points, you're just not going to see it. So, like, even with the Witch King Sully, they, they can stop one chariot and there's still three more coming at you. It's, it's yeah. absolutely tremendous. The only yeah, thing it's seven. would be like the, um, the Arnor sort of horde. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just but even then, Malbeth really needs to be on point. If he if he yeah. if he's not, it's it's Grim City. I think interesting enough, this is one of those lists where I and I confess this is partially from watching Gollum's game as bat, bat reps, which may not be uh, a reliable source of information. But against Witch King Sully, you ignore the Witch King because he can only affect one of your chariots, and then the other chariots just kind of go into Sulodan and go. Well, I'm kind of D seven. And the, the terror win the doesn't fight, affect you either. Yeah. yeah. What I would what I would say about this is it is one of its biggest counters is like heavy D seven. Yeah, dwarves. which isn't super prevalent at five hundred points. But if you do run into dwarves, like you're probably not gonna. On average, you don't kill them; they just block yeah. you. Which doesn't mean you're not gonna then kill them in combat, but it certainly denies the cavalry. Sorry, the uh, chariot, something that you want. Also, the other tactic for this is the skirmishing part, where you have to shoot and that is not so easy with these this, uh, d7 guys with just ring two bows having said that like i wouldn't say any dwarf list is particularly powerful at 500 they're just not they don't get the bodies mm. um this yeah, is a bit of a glass get... hammer though it's 14 models lists of old um the uh like the day nine foot ballista and like 18 dudes on a banner at 500 and obviously that's a bit over now because the ballista went up in points but that could cause this some upset if you oh, got yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, it's a while now, but when since Ryan won at all, was it? It was it Dane, Thorin, Dwalin, and a ballista. Yeah, that was comical. Six that was my sixth. Yeah, that was nasty. That was. Yeah. The bad old days. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised he did well with it. I imagine he got three wins. Also, it is Yaktiv, isn't it? Let, let's be fair. Yeah, it, it is a really cool list. If, if I had this army of kind i would use it all the time yeah i i mean i think at the moment the meta the way it is below about 600 canned is actually a pretty good shot because again harad is a problem this loves running in harad uh you know got anything that can get numbers this is just going to mow down comically easily and hunter orcs fucking hate this <laughs> so you know yeah i think it's a good it's actually quite good in the small points meta at the moment so Jakob did go 3-0, as you alluded to earlier. Now, as we said, uh, the kind of list that we thought would do really well, uh, in fact, the list that John Partridge took was uh, Felbings and Mirkwood, based on the Spider yeah. Queen and the banners and whatnot. Um, so, of course, coming in first place, it was uh, Helm's Guard <laughs> <laughs> with Mr. Callum Wright, um, nice. which is really cool. I love Helm Hammerhand. I think at 500 points, he just... He absolutely cooks. Anywhere where you're not going to see fight five troops, which 500 points, people taking elves are psychopaths. Um, I say, having done it myself. So running through this list, we've got the big man himself, Helm Hammerhand on horse. Uh, he's got two Royal Guard on horse with throwing spear, one on horse with throwing spear and banner, five Royal Guard with just throwing spears, two Warriors of Rohan with shield, two Warriors of Rohan with bow, three Warriors of Rohan with shield and a throwing spear. You've got a captain of Rohan with shield, with one royal guard with horse and throwing spear, two royal guard with just throwing spear, one warrior of Rohan with bow, and four warrior of Rohan with shield and throwing spear. 
that is a lot of uh, throwing spears. Uh, what is that? One, two, three, four. It's a solid amount. I wouldn't say it's loads because uh, he's got quite a lot of cavalry. Actually, he's got yeah. three admiral guard, which for, for my money is probably a bit overkill at five hundred points. But well, I mean, also they are good the shock banner. troops. Oh, yeah, the banner as well. Yeah, yeah. the um, that's a, definitely a rogue choice. But if you keep them in a little, yeah, well, so for me, I don't really like. I'll have one or maybe two with with Helm's guard, and five five is good. But without the strength four and the charge. Royal Guard chart is just not nearly as dangerous as it needs to be. Like in Riders of Fairden or in regular Rohan, even with Fairden around, that strength four, five, five is super strong, real line breaker. Without that, great objective grabbers because they've got Royal, they've got a uh, bodyguard and everything, and they're actually quite cheap. 15 points or 17 with throwing spears is pretty good for what they actually are. Um, I think they've overinvested in them. To be honest, but I mean, it's obviously not stopped him. <laughs> but uh, I think the fight five d six line is actually better. Uh, Helm Hammerhand does a lot of work in this list, uh, being uh, strength five plus one to wound and free free combats and mighty hero. Like he really stacks it up. Um, and at five hundred points, there isn't. It's not super easy to hold him back. Yeah, I think you're definitely hoping for some good matchups, though. Like, the, I think we can all safely say this isn't a list that you'd expect to win an event like that. Um, it's because mm-hmm. the thing is, it's the classic list at low points where you're putting all of your eggs into one hero basket. Um, yeah. And if, if this did come up against something like Fell Beings, with you know, with the right pilot behind it, a bat swarm and a spider queen, and Helm's, Helm's dead in a turn. Um, and you know, so, even Spider Queen just hurling and killing a load of Rohan and stuff, it would, yeah. it would really impede the momentum, wouldn't it? The hurl is a scary thing. The thing is, though, because he's always calling a heroic combat, he is a permanent threat. So, like, if he goes for you know, for example, if you did want to hurl into him, the Spider Queen has to combat as well. And then if you lose that roll off, he's getting away. He's not spending any resources, and you're you're like whittling. The other thing is also underrated, but he does cause terror when he charges, which causes bat swarms all kinds of problems. Yeah, it's not nice. Obviously, no, it's it's definitely doable, but I actually think he's a sort of real like. I think this list has because he does he doesn't have march, which is a shame because march and mighty hero is a great combo, but he does have resolve, which is niche, but also can play pretty nicely with if you're having to fight a witch king or something because he is such a centerpiece model. And he only has one fate, so his horse is may not be worth keeping safe with your horse lord because one fate is so precious. But yeah, he's he's a fun model to play with. I've used him before. I think five hundred might be one of his strongest points levels, just because um, you can get. I mean, this guy hasn't done it, but you can get up to about thirty models. And if you invest in outriders again, he hasn't gone for outriders here, presumably because he didn't want to proxy Warriors of Rohan, or maybe it wasn't allowed. Uh, but Outriders on foot are a nice thing to have in this list. Uh, and if you have enough, like a nice split of, like a couple of mad Royal Guard, a nice split of Royal Guard throwing spears and uh, Warriors with throwing spears. So you have the option of strength four with piercing strike if you want to, and you can have the spears behind with, because the helm gives everyone fight value. So five, 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 five spears from your Royal Guard. It can play pretty nicely. Um, I had a little yeah, look yeah, at I mean, his would... matchups. And he uh, played Rangers in Heirlooms. Which, which kind of Rangers? Sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, Arathorn and... Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Halberad, yeah. Yeah, so, so Helm loves that because they yeah. can't stop him. It's a bunch yeah, of I mean, fight four to... squishy heroes who he can just bounce Yeah, they have to strike into him and he's just going to run over either of those models. Yeah. Uh, he then played uh, an Elrond and Rivendell, uh, sorry, a Numenor captain last alliance list um, okay. with the Numenor being the front line and destroy the supplies. Um, and then he played Azog's Hunters in Clash by Moonlight. It was 39 model Azog's Hunter list. I'm just. I, I mean, Azog's Hunters is a tough matchup, I'd say. The, yeah, the thing you've got going really for you there is they have to they have to go after your heroes and Helm is, there's, they don't have an easy way to take Helm on. Like yeah, they have a, to just fight him. Azog's Hunters list with 16 bows, although uh, 16 bows yeah. plus um, uh, Nazak, sorry. 
Well, Clash by Moonlight is good there because they can't really they can't far cast you. You only ever have to take one round of shooting. Yeah, and, it, and then, then you've you got can the throw spears at them as well. So yeah. you stay out of twelve, and then you march into their face and say, "All right, chums," and you just start shooting. I suppose that's one of the ones where you go, oh, "I'll actually helm hammer handle call a heroic shoot every turn because it's free." Um, well, you could if, do it. if you if, are if in that skirmishing it, you could range, do that, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, interesting. Uh, very well done, Callum. Um, really cool okay. that you've taken this list to success. It's really nice to see. I think we're all secretly fans of lists which do well and we don't expect them to do well necessarily. Um, and Helm Hammond is such a cool model and such a cool profile. Um, in fact, you could say he's a bit of an unsung hero. <laughs> <laughs> Moving well, on well, to well. the next section. Um, this is actually a uh, Christian movie that came out this year, but I just kind of Googled the phrase and thought, let's use this for a segment. Um, I don't know what it's about. Some, a family or something. Um, we, we only had one um, section of results this week. So what we thought we'd do, um, given that we had... Um, an expert on the matter on is run through a few hero choices that we all personally love, but you just don't see as much as you could do on the battlefield. Um, now, if you're not aware, and I don't know why you wouldn't be aware of this, Will, of course, writes lovely Patreon articles um, on Competitive Tactica. Uh, he puts memes in there. Um, it's great. Go check it out. It's Will's Champions on Patreon. Um, and a few months ago, he made an article um, regarding profiles that he loves, but he just doesn't see quite enough of in the game. And I have shamelessly stolen this idea um, to use as a topic for this episode. You have stolen it. Yes. Me. And I've stolen the stealing of this idea. Um, I, I can't be the first person okay. to come up with it. So uh, you, you've got a I was going to say... To be fair, I, I, I suggested this to Stephen when we were coming up with, with ideas and he segued it into the fact that you'd had a thing about it. So it wasn't directly inspired by the fact that you did that initially, but it is, it's an interesting concept. I was thinking about doing all profiles and then I sort of realized when I started thinking about it, I was just naturally gravitating towards heroes. Mm. Um, I think that's because heroes feel like they have a lot more going on when they when they're sort of hard to use well. Or heroes can often be really cool and interesting, but be in a naff list or whatever. Like a couple of mine are like that. Or they'll be like good in a lot of interesting ways, but sort of are aren't really viable in their own list. We'll come we'll come around to it, but yeah. Hero, so like naff troops are just bad, whereas naff heroes are like misunderstood. You know? Yeah, I can fix him. I can change him. You know? I can fix him exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So first of all, the first choice we have is from Dave. Dave, talk to us about Mister Floy Stonehand. Oh, Floy! Now I'm a I'm a sucker. I miss the bad old days when Floy was a was a real villain, um, bringing a Kazakh guard along to whatever list he was in and removing special rules left, right and centre, causing the rules writers all kinds of headaches in the FAQs. But um, I think the, the real thing with Floy is it's not just that he's uh, only in dwarves, it's that he's a uh, hero fortitude, so you can't ally him. And also he's explicitly locked in the broom cupboard of Moria dwarves with, with Barlin and friends. So you can only use him in a Barlin Gimli list, essentially. Because you can't have any other named heroes from that list, which is confusingly worded, but that does allow Gimli as well. It means you can't have Floy. Uh, you can only have Floy, Gimli, Barlin, and the other two champions of Erebor that are in that list, but you'd never use because they don't have rules that synergize with anything. They're just rubbish. Um, yes, he has. So Floy, Floy's profile is essentially the same as an Iron Guard. He's only five four. He's two attack, strength four, d six. But he has the ability to remove a special rule, spend a point of will, and he can remove a special rule from a model for a turn, for the turn. Uh, and it's just particularly dastardly way of denying your opponent some resources. So, for example, a, a particularly strong one would be something like the Watcher's Tentacles, for example. Uh, or taking away the ability to fly from a, from Gulivar, or, you know, all sorts of things. He's just a really... Yeah. The, the I like was... that 
effect it's a really cool effect and it's so unique and it, i know it kind of breaks the game sometimes but like that's cool it's a unique and special effect and it's kind of locked behind the paywall almost of running him in a kind of crappy army list that can't ally with anything and i know that's intentional but i think that's kind of a shame I, I yeah he's so have... much fun he, he is such a like characterful profile and as you said like he is a bit of a nightmare from a rules writing perspective, but what he does is so unique and so fun that, like, you really should yeah. be taking him if you can. Yeah, exactly. I've heard e- examples, or maybe it's just theory examples of, like, ah, he runs up against the necromancer and goes, you're not allowed to use your will as fate points anymore, and then Legolas just yeah. one-bangs him. And you yeah, go... well, that used to be a thing uh, back in the day before uh, he couldn't ally. So you'd run him, Legolas, and Alfred, who back then could just give might to anyone. Yeah. You tank up your Legolas, and then Undying was everywhere back then. So you say, all right, no, no will is fate. Legolas also hit, bish, bash, bosh, dead. Yeah, Because you've got six might, you're just going to boom. Yeah. Kill the good him. old days. It was, also, <laughs> it, it was also quite common back then to, um, it was Sam Jeffrey, one of the one of the GBHL founders, I should say. Um, he used to run Floyd with like 12 Khazad Guard, Malbeth with, Twelve Arnorians, and and back then Malbeth's five up save was for anyone on your side, and so like yeah. for a really low points investment, you had like an absolutely rock solid core to your army, and then you just sort yeah. of season whatever heroes you fancied on. Um, you just look yeah. at your spice rack of of good troops, and you go, oh, yeah, good I'll side have a was, bit of that. Was, yeah, probably Erkan Brandon's and Riders of Rohan, just from mm, Bleeder. Yeah. yeah, that's good. He's I good mean, player, I, I just think he's. He's just, I, I, I think I'd like, like, I guess absence makes the heart grow fun, doesn't it? And it's the kind of thing that I remember how, all the cool ways it was usable and it's just hard to use it effectively now. So I, yeah. I miss the, I miss Floy. That's, yeah. my, that's my piece. It, it might, that's it might be a, bit of a, a cold take, but I do, like, I personally think that the, the Floy Barlin build is the better way to build um, old dwarves, as it were. Um, I think that what he brings to the list, like him, Barlin and the King's Champion, will still get a load of work done. Um, and I think that's more valuable than having like the, the Burley Cazards with Durin. Um, so if you are going to take yeah. old school dwarves, like Floyd Barlin, I think is the way to go. Barlin, Gimli, Floyd and a King's Champion at 800 is how Dave Reed runs it. And I think that's yeah. that's that's a pretty solid way to do it. Yeah, moving on to my first pick. Uh, can anybody guess which faction this is going to be from? It's Lindir. Um, now, this is a weird one because I've got an actual picture of Lindir, but when I searched him on Google, the first image that came up was Elrond holding a staff of power. Um, because <laughs> honestly, that's what Lindir is. Um, for 75 points, he is 75 points, right? Yes. Yeah. So he's 75 points. So heavy armor. Yeah, so 65 points yeah. base. You can give him heavy armor, you can give him a horse. <sighs> He's a really cool concept as a counselor. And I used to run him when I used to run Rivendell Knights back in the day, in inverted commas, because you'd put him near Elrond and every everything would get resistant to magic within six. Although back then the rule was a bit funky. It used to be everything that starts within six of him which you used to then have to use to track with loom bands or something, which was, they clarified it and made it much better. Um, so yeah, he gets resistant to magic to everything within six, and Elrond gets a free will point every turn um, while he's within uh, six inches. It is six inches. God, I should know my own process. Yeah, I think, the, uh, I think that one is. Well, uh, right yes, again. within six inches. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. Now, in terms of what he does apart from that, He's a one might, three will, one fate hero with no casting ability. Um, no combat ability either. And no combat ability because he's one attack, two wounds. He's just an elf. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a cool addition to Elrond. And it, it feels kind of like one of those situations where if Elrond, if you somehow gave Elrond Fortify Spirit as well, um, you could have a really cool, like, Elrond just going around nuking things with, uh, with his three points of will. So yeah, yeah, he's like a he, he's a lukewarm support piece, isn't he? Yeah, um, yeah. What like so I think he's a, a classic one. Um, when I did the the article about like the underrated heroes, 
it was more about like being the second best choice. So like yeah. heroes that are completely legit and would see play if there wasn't something that was just slightly better than them. And I think yeah. him like in a five hundred point night list, he'd <coughs> probably get away with it, and he'd do like he'd do a really good job at supporting Elrond. But the problem with knights, as you'll know, is they're so short on might points that you can't really afford to take him over a captain because that one extra might point yeah. makes a huge difference at almost any well, point level. If, well, if he suddenly, if he yeah. suddenly, and and he's one of the rare heroes with no additional heroic actions. If he suddenly got three might instead of three will. You'd see him a lot. Well, sixty-five points, three might hero I know. fortitude in Rivendell. You'd see, I know. yeah, of course you would. You'd see him all the time because it would suddenly just be him and Kieran for every. You'd be good. You'd like, you like, you even take Elrond. No, <laughs> just let Elrond do yeah. I've got resistant to magic. It's fine. So I, I actually think a six-inch bubble of resistant to magic is low-key quite good as well. Like, mm. what are elves? Elves being five five d six with elven blades and resist the magic is like kind of tough to deal with. You don't have evil sides don't have obvious easy choices to deal with them. Also, I've played against an army when I uh, using a, a um I was using a Swan Lothlorien at last year's WTC against a guy who was running Elrond, Lindir on foot, and um Kirdan. So he's only had five might at eight hundred, which is pretty pretty light. But he had a lot of models for oh. Rivendell because that's you can lead. Do you recall oh. if this was a gentleman from the okay. Netherlands? He was Spanish. Oh, okay. So I was going to say um, I met someone at the Nations Cup who swears by Linda, who plays for Netherlands. So. Yeah. So the thing, the thing with Linda is he's, I mean, cheap for the by the sands of elves, hero of fortitude, and he can lead. You know, you can get the bodies on the table. And resisting the magic was actually giving me a lot of headaches. It made it quite difficult to transfix Elrond when I needed to. And it allowed him to get away with his um, uh, Wrath of the Bruinen rather than having to spend his will to resist. And that obviously is quite important when you're using a majority of D4 army. Um, yeah, and it was, a, it was a tough game. It was like tougher than, I, than than it might initially seem. Because you'd think that would be an okay matchup, really. Um the problem there is obviously the the lack of might. So I think I think he's a he's a cool piece. Like Gildor, he's also only got one might. Gildor, I considered having Gildor on my list, but I assumed you were going to cover the Rivendell side of things. So. I didn't want to go down too far into the Rivendell rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> so moving on to Will's first pick, and actually a pick that was originally also on Dave's list when we were all picking five instead of four, the Golden King. Now, he's a hero in the Harad list with a banner, right? He is. Oh, yeah. he's, got the, he's got the second best banner of the East. The, um, the third. He doesn't, like, the, the fact that people don't take him, I think, is an abomination. Um, and the only reason you don't see him is because Suladan is like vaguely the same cost and just better for what he brings. Mm -hmm. But he's a good troop chomper. He, he has four attacks. He's got Burley. So he can beat the foot real nice. He's got a banner. The the bases are comical, which means that he can actually charge four troops if he wants to. Um, which you know basically nothing mischief, else. Yeah, yeah, he can really just go and mess some stuff up. Um, but the the fun comes in um, with his riches beyond renown special rule. So he's got a mighty six will points, which is also nothing to sniff at. Um, but whenever an enemy model takes a courage test for whatever reason. Um, you can essentially um, spend will points to reduce their role. Um, so he combos crazy well with sort of magic casters, dead marsh specters um, from previous editions, admittedly. Um, the, there's a, a proper meme list where you take the Mordor catapult with severed heads and then him with his, you know, bag of money to distract people. And with the right combos, and obviously with a little bit of dice luck, but you have the resources there if you need it, you can just make the most scary thing on the field useless. Um, you know, stop them. Well, as soon as you break them, you can make like an Aragorn flee relatively easily. Um, I, I just think he's great. He absolutely massacres troops and he can make really scary things go away. I don't really know what more you could want. Yeah, it's also, um, he, he does have lots of funky stuff going on with his base, as you've alluded to. He's the... One of the only mm. models, in fact, the only model in the game you can trap using two models and nothing else. Yeah. Um, 
if you've never seen him on the tabletop, and I'm not surprised because A, I think he's currently metal only um, and maybe is, out of yeah. production. Um, and B, Solodan yeah. exists. Well, um, the thing is, honestly, he is, other than the fact that his banner is a puny six inches, which is really, it's better, better than that. The, sorry, a puny three inches. It's a little bit better than that because as we've established, he's got a wacky base. So it's essentially like having two banners next to each other. Uh, which is a little better, obviously. Um, that which is renowned, renowned rule is still excellent. The problem is, yeah, it's just the problem. The only problem with him is that Suladan exists, yeah, and is has a six inch banner and is cheaper and leads more troops. I actually and also has heroic strike and five five, which is actually not insignificant. What I would March. say is, I what and, and March, yeah, and March, yeah, so, so good. Good. How it's does so every because. Because Soledad having March is the reason why he fits into the list that I like to use so well. Because I was reading that, and I'm thinking, like, which is beyond renown. As long as he's still on the board, once you're at the point where your opponent has to take crucial courage tests on heroes, it's just such a, a, a wedge. Even really high courage heroes. But then you're like, ah, oh, but then I have to have March and this. And I don't have, oh, hmm. If, if anyone can do it, Dave, if anyone can do it, it's you. <sighs> I want to see you take him and uh, pull some I want to take him. I'll, bust him thing is, you, you, I'll bring you, him up. New Barn Door. Sort of that's the last done. year. It's the Golden King. This is the but year. Because of that, like, you know, the, the, the green alliance between him and Mordor, he obviously yeah. pairs well, incredibly well into um, magic. So, him and a Witch King, you've already got a native minus one to everyone's courage. And the Witch King yeah. can literally sit there and punk heroes with um, Drain Courage, a spell that famously you don't want to have to try and resist. And then suddenly, as soon as you get the break, which Mordor can do pretty capably, like mm. all the heroes are just gone. Like it's it's nuts. In Red versus Blue as well, if you come up against something like Hunter Orcs, not only will he massacre the troops, but then when you do get the break and Fimble, Yasneg and Nazog have all legged it, which you know they they barely stick around as it is, um, yeah. like the the whole army just completely evaporates. Mm. And let's not forget, like if, if the Witch King, maybe he has to do a channel because he's only fight four, but the Witch King channel transfixes something. You get him in and trap him just with one of a model or you know with as much as you want. Eight strikes at strength four plus one to wounds. Like he will literally kill most heroes. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, you give me a lot to think about with this one. Moving on to I, the next he, big day. He, he was going to be on my list, and I still haven't really thought about him. I know, I know. <laughs> oh. It's Girion, Lord of Dale. Oh, Girion, Lord of Dale. Now, this this is kind of a... I like Girion, and I think he's the most interesting thing Dale have going, which is to say he's essentially... He's got bard-level shooting at a budget price. He's a... He's only uh, so he's only five five. He's only two attacks. He's only like d five, I think. <laughs> Not sure about that actually, but he's uh he's got a great. Well, you pay five points. He's got a great bow and he can shoot it three times with a three plus shoot value. He's got a strike. He's just like he's a beast, and he's but... kind of let down by the fact that he's in a really confusingly dodgy army list. I feel like like they're just not interesting. Does he have the same rule as Bard then? If he hits, he gets. Yeah, he has the rapid fire bar. He has the rapid fire rule, same as Bard. So same, like you, if you hit, you can hit it. uh, You can shoot again at a target, either the same target or another target within three uh, inches of the first target you hit. Um, And again, he's he's a hero of valor, and he's at a budget price. He's only eighty points with his great bow, which is for some reason optional. I think he may be a hero of legends. No, he's only valor. Unfortunately, uh, sure. yeah, and, uh, he, it feels he, like he, he could totally legend. have a legendary legion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where he is he, a legend, but he's certainly like the, the good Vrasku, isn't he? Um, he, he oh, does like he six. does quite a lot for his points, um, yes, and he also his courage six, yeah. I mean, courage six is great, yeah. he can take Sorry. the wing lance, which is probably the worst siege weapon in the game, but it's still a siege he, weapon. If you want to have the wind lance, if you want to make him cost the same as Bard, take the wind lance. Yeah. Um, so, like for me, the, the the thing that I the thing that makes him me want to use him is I actually really like his profile. If I could have him in a different list, then I would. 
and I've often thought he kind of makes sense allied into an army of Thrallists because Dale don't really have a great alliance matrix. Although, to be fair, he could go into a yellow alliance matrix, all right. But Hobbit era uh, good side doesn't have the most impressive alliance matrix. Let me see. Where's Dale? Not, not from his age, anyway. No. You can do the elves, but elves, you're like, well, I mean, Legolas is there. You know what I mean? Or Bard is there, and he can actually lead more useful troops army of thrall if you drop him into an army of thrall list that kind of makes sense to me um yeah he's he's basically only like radagast alliance the elves the ents the eagles essentially um which is an army of thrall which is a little disappointing because i think that otherwise that guy has the potential to lead you know be a be a part of some interesting good alliances mm. but Alas, or you can be a Chad and Red Alliance him with Bard and Legolas, and then just. <laughs> it's. Uh, I am waiting for the day when Ben Haslam decides to take his Dale army with Girion because I don't think I've seen it yet. I know he's done Defenders of Erebor and he's well, done he, the yeah, army of the Garrison of baby. Dale Legendary Legion. It's an um, army of Thrall as well. He does all of that stuff. By the end of the year, I reckon he'll have won a an event in the Northern Region with uh, Girion Lord of Dale. Mark my words. I mean, if he if he's brave enough to try, I think. But side note, but I think if you're going to run Dale, smallish points. I think Girion and two captains with bow, max out your shooting, might be the way to do it. I think that might be better than Swarm Protector, but you know, it's a toss up. Yeah. Moving on to my second pick, it's only bloody Irolas. Woo! Oh, what a dude! It's sorry, Oakenshield, but not quite. Um, is yeah. how I like to think of him. Oh, sorry, Oakenshield. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love so those of you unaware, um, he is actually in the movies. Um, he is one of the Citadel Guard. Yeah. Um, he's sixty-five points in the Minister of Army list. Army, uh, li- You'll like. Hero of Fortitude. Oh, it's Lord Denethor foreseen this doom. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a. He's, he's just a, bit, a witch fan, yeah. He's a bit of a wetty, I'll be honest. Um, however, yeah. he's got he's got quite a nice profile. Um, he's fight five, which for a man just like Chud Hero isn't too bad. Um, the straightforward defense six, two attacks, two wounds, four courage with bodyguard as well. Um, three might, one will, one fate. So relatively standard captain profile. Um, <laughs> Importantly, though, he's got this helmet which allows him to shield. And if he wins the fight, he bonks you over the head with it and makes a strength four strike, which I think is really cool. Um, the open shield. He also, for a relatively cheap hero, has heroic defense and bodyguard, mm. which means you go, ah, that big scary thing, that Baylor, <coughs> that Gilgalad, whatever. Not only am I guaranteed to charge it, assuming my leader is still alive. But I can hold it up relatively reliably for, mm. say, two or three turns with a heroic defense. Uh, and if yeah, I do win the fight, the... sorry, does he also have march as well? He does have march. That's he what does. I was gonna. Yeah, yeah. March defense. yeah buddy. Like, like if you had to thing... pick two for a, a very like a, a low cost hero, then march and defense are pretty tasty, I'd say. So, problems with this fella is he's basically Madril's little brother. Yeah. Is the issue, and that's not because Madril is better than him in every way. It's actually not true at all. But the niche he that or the one niche that he can occupy in Minas Tirith is the same niche that Madril occupies, and unfortunately, Madril is very good. I wouldn't say he's better because he's just different. But Madril gives you the you know the uh, reinforcements rule for heirlooms. Uh, sorry, not heirlooms. Uh, Maelstrom protection, which is amazing. He comes with a bow, and he's cheaper. And fight five matters a little less in Minas Tirith because commonly people will be running Boromir, and if you've got Boromir, you've probably got fight five spears, and fight five is different. So his niche is there and it exists, and it's really cool, and I like him, and I've used him in fact in Minas Tirith. At which point he did call a defense and then immediately get one shot by a charging Sildadan anyway because you know, <laughs> of course he did um, I had this thought in my mind I was like, I'm going to defense and I'm going to shield and I'm going to kill his horse with my swan attack and then I just got triple sixed and it was like okay <laughs> that'll, show, that'll show me um, okay. but yeah I love him and I love his model and I think he's a really cool idea profile um, but like fight five would be way better if he had strike because that's a higher starting point and obviously like 
uh, Ingold and Kyrian are the cheap strikers in Minas Tirith. They both start at fight four. So starting at fight five would be huge. But again, not having strike and having March puts him in this weird middle ground where he's like really dope in a lot of ways. But then anytime it push comes to shove, you're looking at Madril and you're like, Damn, that boy looking like <laughs> is a he snack. just better? Yeah. In, in yeah. Madril my, be yeah. looking like a snack. In my campaign with Gondor, um, he regularly lost out to Wingold because um, I, I was in the sort of the very aggressive um, Fountain Court Bozza build. And then mm-hmm. the thing is, Ingold just complemented that list better. Um, having a secondary strike is never a bad thing, but the, the not backing away rule is is like super underused. Yeah, yeah, I find that rule when you're playing with and against it is really confusing. <laughs> like when you when it happens, because it's like a three inch bubble around him, and like it's so alien to back away when you win a fight. It's like. It feels it, uncomfortable. It just, I played against it uh, at the at the Nations Cup. Christian Lewis was using it for Team Lions, and um, it just something about it just sort of breaks my brain. It's so out there. I, I personally, I I don't know. I like backing away too much to use it, but also I do see the benefit. And again, it fucks your opponent as it turns out. So yeah, at the, at the risk of becoming it, actually, I should have chosen Ingold instead of Iralas. Um, <laughs> I would say that the Ingold rule would be much improved if it was just you choose who backs away. Yeah, um, that would be amazing. That would be really yeah. good. The, um, yeah, go on, Bill. All right. The, the, the only reason I picked... Uh, I, I'm all for Irala should see more play. If nothing else, the model's dope as hell. Yeah. Um, what I found with the Ingold build is because you never back away, you always keep your formation and it means that you call less heroic moves because your line hasn't been all janked up by losing fights. And I just found that like super handy um, when you've paid lots of points for like an expensive fighting line with the fountain court. Um, mm-hmm. hold, no, holding the line and, and saving Bozza's might was like super handy. There might be something you're missing there, which is if you just roll sixes and don't lose the fight, you don't you don't need Ingold. So. Well, yeah, in gold and then you still have to back away. <laughs> Oh god. Um moving on anyway. to Will's next pick. It's only bloody Dwalin. Here he is, the big boy. Um again, he is the, the second best hero in Erebor Reclaims. Um he's the same points as Thorin. He hits way harder than Thorin, but he loses out because he doesn't get to call a free hero combat every turn. Um, that's basically the only reason you don't see him. He's you know, fight six, he can have four attacks on the ground. Strength five with Burley if he wants it. You get him on a go, especially one on one against a hero, and he will kill that hero if he wins the fight. Um, he's absolutely nuts, but he doesn't complement the army well enough. Um, in the where the likes of Dane and Thorin do, so you just don't see him. And I wish you saw him everywhere because he slaps. Yeah, and like the really the real nail in his coffin is little Biffa because. It, yeah, you might occasionally see him if it was Thorin Dane and then question mark, but unfortunately, question mark is always Biffa. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, if Biffa was thirty points more, people would still take him. Yeah, yeah, man, Biffa's correct. I like him. I think he's like su- I think of him as like super duper Gimli because Gimli has the old two attacks or three strength four or plus one, and he's like, well, I'm all right, bitch. I'm three attacks <laughs> or four, and I'm strength five, and I'm fearless. What are you gonna do about it? And I can be mounted. What about that? Uh, um, yeah, he's he's great. Strength five plus. I mean, if he's charging troops, d six troops. If you want to go nutty, you can just pierce. You don't even have to go two handed. You know, he's 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 awesome um, yeah. at killing. Um, again, it's one of those lists where there's a lot enough good pieces. Um, there are there are other infantry. I really like him. He's, he offers a lot. Um, interestingly, you know, he's in the Defenders of Erebor Legion. He can't be on a GOAT, but he's still great in that list. He's still, again, super Gimli. The problem there, again, is you have to have one of each of the... You have to have uh, Dane and uh, one of the men heroes as well. You have to have one from each Dale, one from uh, the Royal Line. So he ends up losing out again because you're kind of stuck picking them and then you probably want a marcher. And so you're you're not able to spec into him. Yeah, and that's a shame because... He's a beast. He, he, in, the, in that legendary legion, he's 
generally going to be hero number five. And at that point, yeah. you're going to be at a thousand points. And even then, I think Biff is also in that legendary legion. So it's like, yeah, I should probably just take that guy. Yeah. Um, moving on yeah. to Dave's third oh. pick. It's the spider quit. Oh, no, no, it's not. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you it's the Queen of Spiders. <laughs> so, um, I've obviously used her a fair bit in Kirithangle, but I'm I'm going to caveat this by saying that I I mean, while Kirithangle is not an overpowering list or anything, I think I'm just talking about this in Mordor uh, primarily as a as a. Um, I've always advocated that she is an amazing scalpel, and I actually think she gets better with like magic and terror support. So things like um things like Black Numenorians and the Witch King improve her a lot. Um I mean hell even something like Suladan allied allied with her would be an improvement because she got she gets that um just a little bit more reliability. But so fight seven basic is unbelievably good. The only thing she doesn't have uh, her profile is an absolute slam dunk, except it can't lead troops, which is a problem. She's an independent hero, so she has to be allied. That's fine. If you're talking Mordor, which we are generally speaking, she can just be added in, but she can't lead any troops. I won't even mention survival instinct because that's just it's not even a problem. She's got six will, courage four. She's fine. That doesn't matter. Uh, but one attack is the other thing. Um, and like adding a fight seven tr like if you transfix a model you don't even have to strike with her most of the time you can bring her in she just provides the fight seven and a bit of killing power and then the the other guys provide the attacks to win the fight you know like you, you have a couple of orcs in there and then she love jumps in to complete the circle and then you win the fight and she just absolutely mulches most things uh because she still fights she's still strength seven with venom so if she knocks something prone it's going to be four attacks on the charge re-rolling to wound as strength seven like that's going to put at least a couple of wounds on most heroes. Um, she makes it really yeah. reliable with Hurl as well with Strength 7. Exactly, yeah. Big Hurls. Um, I just think she offers a dynamic shift. The problem, I think, for her is that she occupies a similar space to the Fell Beast, essentially. Um, like, if you want to add a monster to your straight Mordor... Fell Beast is a cheaper way of doing it because it's essentially 40 points on top of your regular Witch King on horse. You'd have a Witch King Fell Beast instead, or a you know, a Wraith Fell Beast. It's a and it just it's just a tough points level. Like 90 is a lot. Fight seven is the thing that I think she genuinely brings. Natural fight seven is incredible. So yeah. she's know. like she's like a, a spider queen on safe mode, isn't she? Because the yeah. the spider queen can do a lot more and I'm, I'm sure most people would say it's a better model, but can die for a stiff breeze. Um, and obviously you're going to lose your army bonus as well. Yeah. Um, whereas because she's basically all sevens, um, mm -hmm. she's super duper tough. And as you said, you don't have to... The Spider Queen has might, but will often have to strike, where she often won't have to. So she's just like the, the more reliable, but with a slightly lower ceiling than the Spider Queen. And yeah, for 90 points in Mordor, you can usually afford it if we're honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mordor's so full of good value. I mean, I think this, like, I actually was in my head, I was, I was theory crafting while we were talking about the Golden King. I had an idea for a list and it actually included Shelob as well. So maybe I'll try and kill two birds with one stone on that front. <laughs> cool. Uh, moving on to my number three pick, it's only Elf Helm. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because I do think that Elfham does get taken quite frequently. But I've had a lot of people recently say in Riders of Theoden, they don't want Elfham. And that includes young Mr. Farmer here. Um, and Mr. Will, I'm afraid. Sorry. It, well, it's just, just justifying why I put him in. Um, I think the ability to snipe enemy mounts, specifically Lord, uh, Lord? Hero mounts. Um, in an army where you've got a bunch of charging heroes who suddenly become strength five and whatnot. The worst thing about Rohan is when you don't get your charge bonus and Elfhelm helps you get that charge bonus against enemy heroes. And he's just... <sighs> okay, he's fight four. He doesn't have strike. He's defense six. Mm. But if nothing else, defense, he's got heroic defense. And you can chuck him in on something and go, cool, I'll take out Elrond's horse. 
and then I'll fight Elrond for three turns while Elrond's on the floor. Yeah. So the way I see Elrond's niche is he's essentially planning for if your charge doesn't work as well as you want it to. He's like the he he gets disproportionately better the more roll off throw you lose. I feel. Because he's the guy who, even if he loses his horse, is like, right, my well, my elf arm's in front. He, if you get a charge off, he's got the opportunity to take away important hero horses, as you say. But also, he's going to get in the way of big heroes with defense. He's going to stop them from wrapping and trapping your hip pieces that are a bit more vulnerable on the charge, particularly someone like Theoden or Gamling. Um, well, Gamling has defense as well, but still, you know, he's he just gives you a little bit of defensive play. What I would say, though, is obviously, like I feel like, planning for when the charge doesn't work is kind of the wrong mindset uh, for that that's, list. That's a very I, I really thing. like him. I don't like him in Riders of Theoden. Yeah. yeah the, the thing with Riders of Theoden is like the, the death has to land so hard um, and it's often like annoying enough when you have to throw gambling in and call death because you know that he's just going to bounce with his fight four. Um, and at 65 points, you know, a captain gets to fight five, can get to strength six with his axe. Like will just do more. I do think though, in in your defence, him in um, Theodred's guard, I think he's really really good. Yeah. Um, I, I the way that I've used him in the past is he's just a really good linebacker. So like when um, your opponent is starting to like wrap around your lines and stuff, him him then sweeping in to clean up um, in objective scenarios like recon and stuff because his throwing spear is so reliable. He's really good at like one v one dueling, annoying models or models that are breaking away, and because he's cheap, you don't really feel like you're wasting that much of an investment by using him as that. He, he's definitely got play. I don't think it's in riders, um, but I'd probably take him yeah. in any there, regardless. I took. He's um, unfortunately the same points as Dunhelm, which is not a nice com- direct. Yeah, that's, that's a big yeah. use, isn't it? Dunhelm is just such insane value. I mean, yeah, that, I mean that's a bit different. I mean, Denham is ridiculously cheap, whereas Elfhelm is like pretty fair for what he offers. So I think, yeah, I like them. I like him a lot. And also, it has to be said, his model is unbelievably good. I think it's probably the best, one of the best Rohan models. The so sure. the pictures on the screen don't do it justice, but the <laughs> both the foot and like the sculpts. Well, I, the I, like I said, I love I love models where they're just standing there, and he's a great example of that. So yeah. Obviously, he he can't be in it, but like if if you took his foot model and put it in with the um, defenders of Helm's Deep, all of the stoic mm-hmm. climbing poses, it would look yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah, like you know, the, when all the guys are on, you know, the uh, the box where they're all standing there. Uh, I think is that what what's that box called? Defend is it defenders of Helm's Deep, the one where Gimli's like standing and resting I, his axe? I, I always get mixed up. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think it is defenders of Helm's Deep. The box. It's either that or like defenders of heroes of Rohan or something. It's yeah. something like that. Anyway, uh, like one of the boxes is like on his shoulder and Aragorn's like pointing, yeah. holding his belt. Yeah, it, that's that's the one, some of my yeah. favorite models in the range, and he would slot yeah. right in. He would fit perfectly with them. Yeah, be a great little display. <laughs> Cool. And All right. moving on, um, it's Will's boy. Ooh. You've been rattling about this... for years. I knew he'd be on here. You're such an am- you're such an amder truther. I I really am. So I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When Amder is on the front foot, he is one of the best heroes in the game. Um, I and and you know people hate the Dragon Emperor for a multitude of reasons. Because you know mainly because he's busted as all hell and still way too cheap. But Amda deserves more than being cucked by a guy on a chair. Um, he, he fights it. He's got an elven blade. He's got a strike. He gets to counter-strike for free, so he's never worse off. He's got blood and glory. He's got unyielding combat stance. Um, so if he would ever be knocked prone on a four, if he's not, which is situational, but like it definitely matters. Um, he, he just has such an unbelievable damage output and a, and a stat block. Um, he's got uh, the gleaming horde with his cataphracts. So he can get him to defense seven. He can get his horse to defense six, which is certainly yeah. a handy thing to have. Um, I, he's just super good. And when you pair him with um, now, what's his face? The little shaman boy, just following up my head. Yeah. 
with him or a war priest, if you really feel the need to, uh, you can get him to strength 10 like with uh, with Blade Wrath. He can go two-handed if he wants to. Like it, it, With the right setup, he can basically wound, I think, almost anything in the game on twos. Like what? What more do you want? Like he's an absolute murderer, um, but he loses out because the dragon emperor exists. Yeah, I think his big problem is, I think he's d six more than anything. Also, yeah. obviously, he gets neglected from Eastern list entirely because of the dragon emperor and the five five troops is better than any hero could really ever be by themselves, and a twelve inch banner and everything. But. Um, Fights his fight six is really good and evil, and his counter strike rule is really good. Um, I always think that that rule would be even better on a good side hero. Like, if you're fighting evil heroes, it's really good because more of them are fight five or like Rohan heroes. You get, but essentially, it's like master of battle for that. You can strike for free. Um, he's he's just a bit expensive for a hero that doesn't have any sort of built in like lance or anything. I like the fact that he has an elven made sword, but again, even the dragon emperor is cucking him on that front as well as taking away his uniqueness. That, that's it. It's the dragon emperor's basically taking all of the things that Amder liked and then put it on a better chassis. Um, yeah, it's worth saying yeah. as well. So he, he counts as a banner, which again, the dragon emperor stole. Um, and then literally I a think, battery that is even worse. Yeah. It's a council banner. But I think if he kills the enemy general, it goes to a six-inch range banner, which, if the Dragon Emperor didn't exist, would seem really cool. Um, yeah. And it's the little things as well. So, like, he's got Phalanx. So, if you um, if your horse gets punked, even through the Gleaming Horde, like, him on foot with two pikemen behind him, with a banner re-roll, him going two-handed, like, he, he can still get, like, way more work done on foot than most heroes can. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super hard for Amder. I, I can't lie. The, the Dragon Emperor yeah. is the worst thing that ever happened to him. The, well, the, I mean, the other problem is that the Easterling list without the Dragon Emperor yeah. isn't very good because you're paying yeah. the two points for the Black Dragons. Um, yeah. It's, it's super mid, isn't it? And it's a shame because, like, him and Ratabi side by side in a phalanx would get serious work done, but you just can't ignore the benefits that the Dragon Emperor brings. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. He's definitely uh, locked in the broom cupboard at the moment. Yeah. Big Moving self. on to Dave's fourth and final pick. It's that Angbor. That is the wrong model. That is, An that is Anbor, not Angbor. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, pranked. Oh, yeah, look at that. Angbor oh. the Fearless. Angbor the Fearless, yeah. So... I like this guy. I think he's cool. Um, and I, I think he has a lot of actually really positive attributes, but he gets overshadowed in his own list by too many models. Like, his rules as they are uh, would be amazing in certain other lists because he has a six-inch bubble of Fearless, and that's a really cool rule. He's a Vahir of Valor, and he only costs 65 points. He has Heroic Strike. He, again, he's Fearless. He has plus one to Wound, although admittedly he actually has to take the minus one, which is a bit sad, but for a fight, fight five, he has a couple of problems. Is that he's only got two might for some reason. The fiefdom's heroes, even the named ones, were randomly they were they were sick on the day that all the named heroes were getting their third might points. Yeah, I guess because doing here and Angkor are both yeah and Aristor as well. Yeah, they're on they're in the two might school. Meanwhile, Snagger is out here getting three whole might points all for himself. They, they didn't uh, pay for the gold subscription. It's Nazarax yeah, exactly. out there having stolen the might points. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Nasdaq. Good reference. Um, yeah, so the problem he has is he's the fifth choice list, even in pure fiefdoms, which is the only list where he could realistically be considered to be worth a damn. He is the fifth choice hero because Emra Hill, Forlong, a captain, and doing here are realistically all ahead of him. Uh, yeah. And that's just a bit sad. His only niche is that he's the second striker, but that list has access to fight six anyway, and Let's be honest; it's not that strong of a list in the first place. So, like, it's Harry a fine Park list. Hill would beg to differ, and he would like, be incorrect. I've, I've done right with feet. I've done okay with fiefdoms, but it's not. It's not a powerful list. Yeah. You know, I think it is. He is quite a cool profile. I really like the yeah. kind of uh, Scottish clansman aesthetic, like Braveheart style. Braveheart's yeah, one of my with like that, with the models. One of my like favorite movies to just watch and just chill. Um, and the 
you kind of alluded to earlier, he has to go two-handed, but if he rolls a natural six, yeah. he doesn't get the minus one the on the dual roll, sword. which is a really cool rule, which you only see on three profiles. I think it's the Knight of the White Tower, this, and the Clansman. Mm. Um, mm. And like I say, it, it's just a cool concept, is that he he's, he's a fearless dude, he's got a bunch of fearless dudes around him. Um, mm. You know, it's Scottish Alba Gubra yeah. attitude. Making the whole list fearless is nice. Yeah. And you can make Emeril fearless for that 12 inch stand fast if you want. But it's, I mean, the problem is the heroes in this list have good courage anyway. And Forlong, who is 90 points when mounted, comes with a warhorn. So he really does get little brothered pretty hard by Forlong. So they're all also like storage four minutes anyway, aren't they? Apart from the Blackroot Veil Archer. So it's not like uh, the Black Root, the yeah. Black Root Veil anyway. Well, the, the Black Root, the 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 uh the regular warriors are cursed. The, so the men at arms are cursed three. Um, and so are the uh, axemen of Lost and Ark. The no, sure. archers of the the knights are cursed four. Um, but yeah, the heroes are all pretty good courage, and Imrahil has a twelve inch stand fast. So. It, I think there's, there's, there's probably a build out there for him. I think at low points, when you take the three lesser feet from heroes, um, it'd be pretty good. But also, because he's a valor, um, mm. like taking him and 15 men at arms and taking them into like a, a fountain court, yeah, or like, yes. like hell yeah. The problem, well, you can take it in a yellow line. So that's, that's the thing that the thing, yeah. So the thing is, being a super cheap valor. It's interesting, but then you remember that generally he doesn't have loads of troops that he could bring, and if he did do that, he wouldn't be bringing, um, he wouldn't be bringing his fearless thing for them because the, his rule only affects the clansmen who are already courage five, which is a bit annoying. But whatever, not, like I said, you could bring pikes for cheap, but then it's not that many more points to get four long, and four long comes with three my points and a warhorn, and is just a bit of a beast by comparison. <laughs> Is he strength five as well? Four long, yeah, and a war spear. Four long, yeah, so, beast. yeah, strength five plus one, even for 90 points, will, will outweigh a and, man with a big sword, yeah. And it's the mounted thing. I mean, if you were trying to do some sort of weird, janky small points yellow alliance which involved pikes, he would be a better choice, probably. Just is, about is four long only fortitude but, then. No, uh, Forlong is Forlong is valid, but I'm saying at small points, those right. extra twenty five points could make a much larger difference. So if you wanted to do like a Galadriel, a guard of the Glathrim court with um, men at arms, and then Iron Guard in front, just for some really weird theory hammer that won't work. I mean, I, I've, I, it wouldn't work at small points, that's for sure. But yeah, <laughs> if you wanted the cheapest possible way to ally in, I mean, technically doing here is cheaper, but he has this guy has strike and. Doing here without Black Reveal Archers would be a strange choice, probably. Although okay. doing it does have a defense. Anyway. Hear, hear me out, guys. Okay. So you take um Grimbaon with a load of uh Bayon. Oh, Sandran, how are you doing? And then you are like this this brave boy in with some mm-hmm. pikemen behind it. And you would stuck at almost every scenario that wasn't a fighting one. But two pikes behind the awnings with a, a 65 point dude paying the tax to bring him in wouldn't be terrible. Yeah, you have paid 200 points for a Grim Bayon who's just. is terrible. That's 700 points on the nose. Grim Bayon, um, 15 Bjornings, this guy, 15 pikes. There's definitely well, worth yeah. the point list out there. Listen, the some of our there, viewers, players, 600. some of our viewers are young and impressionable. Please do not buy and take that list unless you're <laughs> okay. buying it from Hang Seventh on. City Wargaming. In which case, I wholly twenty seven models, six hundred points. Grimby on Angor. I'm, I'm going to have to move swiftly on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to uh, it's Dwalin. Oh. But, we, we, Mum, we've got. Can we get Dwalin? We've got Dwalin at home. It's Dwalin, <laughs> Church of England. Ch- Church of England, uh, champion of Erebor. Sorry, um, <laughs> Gloin is such a cool profile in Champions of Erebor because he's a cheaper Dwalin, who is the Gimli as he should have been. He's three attacks with the Burly, and he rerolls one to wound. The one thing I've seen that lets him down. Is that he's only got one will, which means as soon as magic is involved in the game, he gets tugged around like 
Mm. I don't know, a bachelor at a strip club, whatever metaphor you want to throw in there. <laughs> and he also suffers from the Biffa Thorin issue that's been previously outlined. He's in oh. the same list as two profiles which are incredibly efficient and have free heroics, which mean you don't heroics have to spend to might. Be. Might is the best thing in the game. If you're not spending it, you're probably doing Lose. that. Yeah, sorry. I mean, if you're not actually spending might, <laughs> you're probably losing the game. But if you've got free heroics so you don't have to spend the might, you're yeah. probably having a good time. Winning position. He is he is basically a, a better Gimli, which Gimli's already a solid profile. Um, obviously, he's only 3-1-1. But yeah, I just really like Gloin. I think he's cool. Yeah, he, he certainly slaps hard. Um, and because he's got fight six, he can, he can actually... You know, tackle with the best of the troops out there. Um, the, the problem with a lot of the champions are about, aside from the um, like the ones that are good are arguably too good, or you know, so far beyond the rest that it's a really tough take. Is the fact that they're actually surprisingly fragile because they're yeah they're defense eight, but they're still two wounds, one fate, which means a double six from like any battle line. Like you, you could just lose a ninety point model, which is like pretty heartbreaking stuff. Yeah, or like a charge from something weird, like a Rivendell Knight. If it happens to win a fight versus Gloin, could really easily actually just kill him. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, it's not easily, but like it wouldn't be outrageously unlikely for that to happen. I um, have killed um, Ali King's uh, Biffa in one turn with two elves, not trapped, yeah, which was heartbreaking. In the situation, is it's just like oh, two troops, is it? Oh, six is by fours. Um, yeah. I mean, it just happens. The just problem happens. with one fate, two wound heroes, like obviously, that's no more or less likely. You know, other heroes have that same exact issue. I mean, Angle, we were just talking about, is the same, but he's d5, you know. But, um, I think uh, with a with a D eight model, you you invest a lot more money into it. You put it in more risky positions because of that, and that sometimes that risk will pay you back in pain. <laughs> yeah, and if if you lose your ang ball, um, it obviously sucks. But you're like, well, here's defense five, and he's also only sixty five points. But there's there's something emotional about a ninety point model just getting punked in a line fight. But it, it's as you said, it, it's not an unreasonable thing to have happen. And yeah, it really it's like if you play this game enough, yeah, exactly. If you play this game enough, it'll happen to you, you know. Yeah. Like I was saying, the old uh, Iralas getting one shot through his right defense situation. And moving just... on to our yeah. 12th and final pick from Mr. Champion, it's Musker. It's your boy. Um, yes, we see him in Assault on Love Lorien a lot. But what about not in Assault on the Florian? Does anyone ask how he's feeling on his day off? In in a normal Mordor list, um, me and I know we just talked about Ali King, um, we both love the sort of the mid-tier budget casters. Um, so it would be a toss-up between him and the Mouth of Sauron, but the Mouth has seen a lot more competitive play recently. I think people have sort of jumped on the hype train for him. He's he's not a huge amount of points, he's got some really tricksy spells. Um, and he can renew will um, by killing stuff, which he isn't terrible at doing because he's a shaman on an old captain chassis. Um, I think you could do a lot worse for a 70 point investment than Mr. Musger um, in basically any list. Um, the Alliance Matrix model is really generous. Um, and, you know, seeing him anywhere would be would be super duper cool. Yeah, I mean, he's Valor in sort of Lothurian, but in Mordor, he's only Fortune, which isn't yeah. really a big deal because. Mordor is almost always paired with some wraith, and most apart from the basic wraiths, um, they're all valor or higher. So you know that's not a problem. the The thing is, he has so his wither is cool, but it's not his most important thing. I think having access to another. I think if you're doing the small shaman thing, you want to be doing the drain courage nonsense thing. You know, you maybe have him and the Mouth of Sauron, for example. So the Mouth of Sauron mm -hmm. is 70 points on foot or 85 mounted on the Armoured Horse, which uh, is a small bit more. Um, but I think his, um, like, they, they both have Transfix, although the Mouth has it on a 3+. plus. The Mouth has Instill Fear, he has Wither, which is an annoying spell because a one-off Wither on a hero can turn a Strength 4 hero into a complete sack of shit, basically. Um, 
it's the kind of thing that you kind of have to resist, and that makes it harder to resist the other spells, the transfixes. The, yeah, the difficulty we're, we're, is like balancing yeah. killing stuff with lots of annoying heroes. My favorite thing about him is he's an orc, which means that if you're running a like a Gothmog Kardash orc synergy list, he's the guy. You know, he's he takes that uh, that role, which I think is is pretty cool. You know, it means he doesn't run away. It means he like when he gets into combat, he's a little bit more killy if you're having Gothmog against the men, you can have him re-rolling all that good stuff. So you know, it's just synergies. It's not like super powerful synergies, but it's synergies. No, he's, this is what I mean. He's not mega, but he's he's almost always going to be a complement to whatever list he's in. Um, mm. And he's the sort of hero that the likes of uh, Gloin should be afraid of because, you know, he'll sit there and even with his four will points, he'll, he'll with a Gloin down to mean that even when he's not being transfixed by other things, he actually just can't really kill much, even with the plus one. As soon as you get him down to like strength two, because he's not going to be able to resist for that long. You, you could. He is another hero that, um, like the Golden King, gives you an ability to be able to ignore a really powerful hero on the opposite side once you've once mm-hmm. you've done the work. And pairing him with something like um, the Golden King with another drain courage in the list for a pretty cheap price really lets you sort of steer in. He's just very versatile for with the spell range he has. The transfix on a four plus is nothing to sniff at, especially when you only have to kill a model a turn to have a chance to infinitely transfix things. Yeah, I, I guess as as you say, he he is a really cool profile. I do like the model as well. The sculpt's quite nice, mm-hmm. but it is just the you look at Mordor and you've got such an abundance of profiles. Like there's so much to choose yeah. from. You unfortunately find yourself kind of in the uh, the the basic ring wraith playpen, which is like, yeah, you know, I I like he kind of offers the exact opposite in a way, which is to say that he offers you the longevity, whereas the ring wraith is like, right, here's you've got a finite amount of will, and when it's gone, it's gone. Whereas he's like, all right, we have a bit of will, but then. Uh, you know, I can do a paper round and get more kind of vibes. Yeah, you know like I mean? he yeah, he runs around with a gore bag or something, and gore bags yeah. winning the fights, and he's just stabbing something and getting a will. Yeah, bag. it's a yeah. different game. He, like. he pairs up nicely with um, Cartadush as well, because as we've said, getting fury is no bad thing. Um, having fearless orcs is mm-hmm. super important because they're famously not brave. Um, but having uh, Cartadush top up his will every turn automatically. And him, you know, having a reasonable chance at getting consistent will through the game as well. It means that you can just pester and, like, grief heroes with some really annoying spells. Um, so, like, you take those yeah, two and the Witch King. You haven't really invested that much because the Witch King is is a bargain at any point level because he's scalable. Yeah. And then these little, like, these little pesky old boys that follow him around keep recharging and keep just chipping away at these heroes. Is like is is super duper cool. It's yeah. also just really fun to play as well. Um, being able to wither stuff is really yeah, satisfying. I think that's something we uh, we shy away from a bit as well. Sometimes acknowledging that sometimes these things are just good good crack, really good fun. Yeah. Oh, well, Elf Arm's a bit like that as well, and she up. That was our list of heroes that we think you should try out because we think they're fun. Um, the unsung yeah, was... heroes, shall we say? That was good. Let's uh let's close out with some comments, shall we? Let's do it. Oh, big one. Right. I've got to find my mouse. Um, so I can read this one. Mr. Masenko says, Thanks for the great comments on my Kazadum army chaps. Uh, You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you for sending them in. Uh it was nice chatting to you as well. Um I'd like to say it was spicy conversion work on my end, but the dwarf ranges and shield balls are all from the fabulous Mebri miniatures range. That's absolutely fine. There's no shame in using minis from their range is a lovely range. Um, I'm making it my mission to grab as many unique dwarf ranger spells as possible and then feel 40 plus throwing axes and go second on mouse from to ruin somebody's day. Um, <laughs> we should really put you in contact with David Reed because um, he loves his dwarves with throwing axes. Uh, was my first tournament, so very humble to come out with best paint tips. Um, well done. Yeah, well done. That's I, I don't think many people can say they rocked up to a tournament and immediately won a best paint tip, so... Well done. That's that's really cool. Um, hopefully you'll be back for more tournaments. Um, I do have an actual question now, though. So half your Q and A section will be reading this. You don't know how accurate that's going to be. 
Um, <laughs> after using Cats are dumb a while, rerolls of ones never seem to pop off for every roll in twos and threes. My question is, do we think the new Arnold boys coming out will give a yellow alliance with the Stumpy boys some more legitimacy? The cheap Spears edition were, were already an option, but now heavy mounted units and possible three might mounted hero give some new options. Do you think we'll start seeing a more three way with them and Guajira at higher points? Keep up the great work, chaps. Chitter, chitter. Three way. Cool. We um, ones is actually really good. Yeah, I'd yeah. say I've already seen these kind of lists. I mean, they do, they're, they're a, I wouldn't say they're like highly popular, but they're definitely mm. out there. They're, they're there to sort of enable the, Kazadoom Doom frontline, I guess. Um, because Kaza Doom actually have some pretty legit hero, uh, legit troops, sorry. It's the, um, their sort of lack of obvious green alliances means that you sort of, you either have to play them pure and figure out how to make them work without a large spear line, or you say the, the, uh, I us say obvious, I mean, the more obvious route is to say, all right, these guys are on a great frontline, what can I put behind them? And you've got the budget on or option, which you've already mentioned, or there's like the the elf option, um, which is a, a classic, I would say, like Galadriel and and uh, five five, you know, uh, Durin's folk backed up by Lothlorien and Mirkwood is a an ancient scroll that yes. is very popular. Uh, um, and we talked earlier about the, the old like um, Floyd Kazard plus Malbeth Arnold. <laughs> it does still work. It has less energy than it used to. Um, but putting spears behind a tough front line is a tale as old as time, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, rerolling ones is disproportionately better the stronger your troops are. So strength four immediately makes it better, and then plus ones and stuff immediately make it better. So if you're talking about like, I would have winded on fours and I'm rerolling ones versus I was going to roll on sixes and rerolling ones, like it's like fishing versus increasing reliability, um, because it's like a larger percentage of your misses turn into hits essentially uh well in terms of wounding um i don't know if you want to run the alliance with with arnold i think that's it's a strong list i mean i played against something like this in the nation's cup which was arbor uh a dwarf king and uh i think it might be two dwarf kings and um squire here it was it's just a solid list a, a, a squad of spears to go around and then uh, maybe it was Smalbeth, I can't remember and it was a Kazagard at the front, I mean Kazagard are just excellent good value, bodyguard cheap, dwarf kings are also excellent good value, so together they make double good value and you can just really yeah, go out here just solves a lot of other problems I don't know, I mean, I think it's worth a go, definitely a strong list but I wouldn't say it's it's, yeah, well, it's totally worth, ex worth experimenting with. Um, yeah. the, the thing that um, that is really beneficial <clears throat> is you, you have the benefit of being able to have a piercing strike and a feint at the same time. So as Dave was saying, it's it's a bit of a almost like a win more. So the fights that you do win, you are actually way more likely to wound, but you need to make sure you're putting yourself in the situation, like giving yourself a fair chance to convert. Um and this, ironically, the spears let you win more fights, but you probably won't kill quite as well. Um, and also, you always remember the twos and threes. You never remember the ones that you do actually reroll. Yeah, the other option is to get one of the old sets of Hazard Dumb dice, which have symbols on the ones. Um, <laughs> Handy and reminder. Then and then you'll remember. <laughs> uh, Rory Duckett 2665 says, another great pod, guys. Keep it up. Glad to hear my list holds up. Hopefully it can carry me up the rankings. See you in a week or so at the tourney. Chitter, chitter. This was, of course, um, Rory is going to Wolf Slayer uh, this weekend coming. Um, and we did a little review of his list. Um, so, yeah, see you at Wolf Slayer. Um, make sure you uh, can mm -hmm. say hi, because otherwise I won't be able to pretend I'm a Z-list celebrity anymore. Um, oops. Uh, let's see if my keyboard will actually work. There we go. Um, we had a very long conversation between Duncan Peacock and Timmy17 um, regarding uh, hero choices for Numenor Lothlorien. Um, Wednesday is fast becoming the best day of the week. I have a 707, event, 707 point event coming up and I'm planning on running Numenor Lothlorien 
from the scenarios is contests and Alendir what Galadriel leaves with too, too few models for my liking, choosing between Alendir and Haldir or Isildur and Celeborn as the hero combos. Any thoughts? Hmm. Uh, 2017 then follows up some discussion about Isildur and Círdan. Um, oh, yeah. Which is, I mean, is, is probably the right choice, unfortunately. Lendil Haldir is... I don't know, Haldir is uninspired as a second hero. Yeah. Isildur Celeborn is interesting, but I think Celeborn is so unappealing. If you want numbers, Celeborn is not the guy for that. Yeah. He's Galadriel is good for numbers. Haldir is kind of budget, but again, not inspiring. I think I honestly Alendil Haldir or Isildur, sorry, Alendil Galadriel or Isildur Galadriel is a pretty good starting point. Obviously, Galadriel yeah. being your leader is a problem in itself, but actually Isildur Galadriel is pretty neat. And then if you can afford a cheap Numenor captain, you can actually get a pretty solid starting point, I think. I think Ellen Deal could have quite easily been on my list of like underused heroes because Isildur has the ring and that's obviously a, a huge perk. But the killing power of Ellen Deal is, is absolutely absurd. It's you know, it's on par with Helm Hammerham, he's, he's calling a free heroic combat every turn. It like and he's he's mm-hmm. very re- resistant to magic. So I'd I'd love to see more Ellen Deals on the table. Um, I think if you can afford the points for it, Ellen Deal Galadriel, it would be my pick because she can also help keep them out of bother and she brings a lot of elves for her money. So, yeah, the issue with seven hundred and seven points because I've run something vaguely similar with a Galadriel Gilgalad list at seven hundred. So I think you get like thirty something, that low thirty models, maybe thirty on the dot. Um, and that's just where the, where the problem with Numenor comes in because they're only you know their defense is cack, isn't it? Yeah, because if, if, you know, if, if, if you're mid thirties but you're all defense six, you, you've got a reasonable shout at, at holding the line. But D five's just rough, man. Yeah. I, I reckon if, if I was to to take a list like that, I'd do the opposite of what you would normally do, and I'd have Numenor Spearman and Galadriel fr- uh, front line with shields, and then you've yeah. got your defense six, and you still get your defense four in the back. So, so maybe maybe that's an angle to look at and get a load of Numenor and Spearman mm-hmm. to walk around poking with their strong arms. Yeah, there is the option of a Lendil and a uh, Elf Captain. Um, that's an option. I would recommend the Galathrum Captain over the Rivendell Captain, funnily enough. He's that's, not, that's not green though, right? Oh shit, yeah. Never mind. Stephen, edit that out. I'm not going to. Um, if you take a <laughs> Rivendell Captain, which is a green alliance, you can then get your fight five. Um, and you'll probably be okay with numbers. Hang on, I can do a quick mm-hmm. little. Um, because yeah, your issue here is no matter what, it's gonna be numbers. Um plus 80 plus times two. Yeah, I mean you could chuck Kierden in as well then. Rivendell Captain, Kierden, and um Elendil might do you okay. Maybe Galadriel and Lendl is the right choice. Um, just for funsies. She it would be fun. Like, like Kurdan's obviously a great piece. And, you know, I, I remember when people were paying an absurd amount of money for him when he was out of production. Um, because he's, he's a really good catch all and he busts the army really nicely. Um, but Galadriel can do a reasonable amount of what he does, um, but also has, um, you know, transfix and compel. Which, when you have a hero like Ellen Deal, um, being able to do stuff like the Day Farmer special, of you can power a thing out, um, and then your big hero goes in, calls a free hero combat, kills that thing, and then just trots safely back into the line. Like mm-hmm. it, it gives you so much table control that Kerdan doesn't bring. He and can you're... set your army up, he can give you blinding light, make you scary, make you fearless. But if their line's better than yours or they, they manage to outmaneuver you, They'll still beat you up, and well, Galadriel actually can hold things in place for Ellen Deal to bonk on the head. You can also <laughs> another benefit of that is you get to do the good old. Um, I've pulled you out, and I'm calling her at combat. If you have any heroes within range, they have to shit themselves and call a defense exactly. or a strike immediately because Ellen Deal will kill them. Um, yeah. And as Dave identified with Shelob, because he's natural fight seven, he, like he doesn't even have to strike all that often either. It's such just, alpha male behaviour, isn't it? It is. It's, it's big dick energy. It's got to be said. 
He just goes <laughs> out and he will massacre a thing. And then, you know, you've got your reliable heroic slingshots, then you pull a thing out, you put a load of boys on, you call a free combat, and you can go and hit a line when it's not ready. Or you, you just do a kill, say thank you very much for the points lead, and then drop back. Like, it's it's super good. Yeah. I'm just having a very quick look. You can actually get, I think, 34 models with a banner and a sentinel, um, which at 707, when they're elves and Numenor, and you've got Elendil to make up the numbers, it's not actually too bad. I think yeah. that is 100% a, a, like an actual viable list, yeah. for sure. <laughs> you, you might struggle into lists which just significantly outnumber you, but you just hope that Elendil does the business, because if he does... If he pops up, if, if you can keep him going, I mean, he's he's got Fortify built in. He's pretty, he's a Chad. Yeah, and you've got Galadriel to immobilize the opponent's threats. Yeah, I think thirty-two or thirty-four model um, uh, Galadriel Elendil list. Well, obviously, Elendil is the, is the leader is probably the way for you to go at that point. So, yeah, he he lets you make the call as well, doesn't he? Because if you if you know the scenarios ahead of time and if contest is going to be in there, you can make him the leader. Or you yeah. can you can take the chance, like you can win contest with Galadriel as your leader, especially when you have a, a backup hero like that just forcing himself down your like the opponent's throat. Um it's the same as like the, the Thorin Galadriel, like yeah, Galadriel's your leader, but Thorin can cause so much issues and is so hard to pin down and Ellen deals, you know, even better. So yeah. hopefully that advice is helpful enough. Um, if you are struggling with the numbers, uh, Timmy17 underneath has given you a bit of advice of just maxing out with a silver or Haldir and the captain. So uh, you can get about 40 models there. Moving on to the last comment. We didn't actually have very many comments on the last episode. Um, <clears throat> quite upsetting. It's probably because I wasn't there. So, you know. No star power. Uh, Fourth Farthings Gaming says, great reviews, guys. I'm sure it's nice keeping your mind off of England playing media mediocre in the Euros. Germany is going to win the whole thing. Well, I'll have you know that England just won their group. Yeah, we With did it by the tactics, probably, and it, not getting draws, maybe. It's, I don't know. It's, it's the SVG equivalent of all of your opponents constantly drawing and you get one uh, one nil win. Because oh yeah, that's, that's how the do it. Um, Except Poland lost their group, so yeah, you know, go figure. Uh, yeah, England are playing very mediocre at the moment, um, but it's coming. I have home. thoughts, but that's right. not that's beyond the purview of this podcast. <laughs> this is not a football review podcast. This is an FPG podcast. And on that note. Gentle reminder, we are affiliated with Seven City Collectibles. Go <laughs> check out the link in the description. Um, thank you all for commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Go check out Will's Patreon, Will's Champions. Uh, you can find some great articles on there. You can get some great advice on the Discord. It's a nice community of new and veteran players alike who are seeking to improve themselves. Uh, remember to, uh, I don't know, go to events and be nice to people. That's my command for this week. Do that. Um, chitter chitter, first everyone. commandant, chitter chitter, gamers. You've got to say chitter chitter, well, sorry, chit chit, baby. <laughs> uh.